Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's going on, my friends? What's going on? How are you? Welcome. Welcome one, welcome all. The time has come. The time has come for some fun gameplay streams. That's correct. Today is Monday, the 7th of December, 2020. I am Dark Side Phil. And this is my final consecutive streaming day of the week. That is correct. Welcome to the stream, everyone. I hope that you're all in a good mood. I hope you find you in jovial spirits and that you are doing well. And uh, I hope you're ready for some fun stuff today as we continue on with an ongoing playthrough and doing some fun uh, multiplayer today as well. Fun multiplayer action later today. Good stuff. Okay? So let's talk about that. All right, let's talk a little bit about the gaming schedule for the next week. I've got one really interesting gaming story to talk about this morning and one that I just want to gloss over because I feel like we've beaten the dead horse, but it's worth mentioning very briefly, okay? So, <clears throat> today, I'm playing games. What a shock. I never play games, right? Yeah, right. Uh, today, we're continuing on with Yakuza. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Great game so far. I feel it's actually getting better the further we get into it as we're unlocking new classes, we're unlocking new new parts of the story, side content. Um, it's good stuff. I'm really enjoying it. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Last stream we unlocked the go-karting missions, which are basically like Mario Kart. Um, and we're inside of a very, very long dungeon. But that's fine. It's actually very, not very, very long. I've only been in for about, i say maybe 20, 25 minutes, if that. Um, the plot has definitely picked up in a big way, right? Um, and I'm having a lot of fun so far. I'm in the middle of a dungeon. I've actually kind of felt, it felt like a, like a cliffhanger last time because I don't like ending in the middle of a dungeon, but I had to. In fact, I was kind of turboing through said dungeon, uh, because I needed to end the stream. And I have to backtrack a little bit today, which we'll do, and it's fine. We're going to casually backtrack, make sure I didn't miss any items or anything critical or important in the dungeon, Okay. So, this should be fun. I've really enjoyed the game so far. You guys have basically told me that Yakuza is one of your favorite games that I'm playing, which is great because I love the game. It's always good to see people are accepting a JRPG as one of my, uh, you know, more accepted playthroughs because typically when I play RPGs, uh, you get a big, divert, you get a, a divided audience. <coughs> some people really like my RPG playthroughs and some people absolutely you know hate them they claim that they're too boring too slow paced all right and for me <coughs> i got a tickle in my throat out of nowhere <clears throat> i love jrpgs i grew up playing them and the fact that yakuza 7 is basically taking that classic jrpg formula and adding a modernized spin to it you know making the enemies in the game seem like you know oh you're fighting Criminal, different kinds of criminals, nut, j nut cases, or even vagabonds, but they're all basically transformed to look like actual RPG enemies. It's pretty funny as hell. Um, so I hope you guys uh, are enjoying the playthrough. I'm looking forward to more of this t the today. Major stream, of course, and uh, you know, great variety today. All right, in in this regard, because the late stream is something completely different, action packed. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War multiplayer on the late stream today, which I'm very excited about. Um, I'm very excited because I like the game a lot, and since my thumbstick has stopped malfunctioning because I turned off the haptic feedback, I'm having a ton of fun with this game. I'm using new weapons now. I'm using the AUG and the... Um, I can't remember the name of the other gun. Was it the, bull, the uh, Bullfrog? Yeah, I'm using two new weapons now. Again, I'm, I'm switching up weapons per your... Uh, in uh, suggestions, and I like this that now I'm using new weapons constantly, and it, it's fun. Okay, so I hope that you guys will check out my late stream tonight as well. I hope. All right, thank you guys for that. Um, I'm off from streaming tomorrow. Tomorrow's my day off where I'll be going out with my wife to do many things that we didn't get to do last week, including getting haircuts, grocery shopping, pet supplies, and I'm gonna start looking for things for the Christmas marathon which is in a couple of weeks now. Okay, should be a good time, but I'm going to be very busy tomorrow. 
I'll be back on Wednesday with more Yakuza. And on Wednesday night, we're going to attempt to finish Twin Mirror, the narrative-based game from Don't Nod. It's a mystery thriller that we've been playing for the past couple of days on late streams. And it's been a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to more on Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, Thursday is the big premiere of Cyberpunk 2077. Per your request, I'm going to be playing the game all day long, both on the early stream and on the late stream. Now, to clarify here, yes, I'm playing it all day Thursday, but I'm not playing. There's no midnight release special stream or anything like that. People keep asking me, and I'm like, first of all, I haven't done a late night midnight release special stream in, like, years. And the last few times I did it, basically, they were not needed. People were like, nah, we don't really, we can't, we, we can't make it, or it's not a big deal. You know, it's not like it used to be, where... Um, sadly, people used to be able to just line up at midnight, grab a game from GameStop, come home, play it, and I'd be like one of the first people to play a game and put the footage out on the internet, and it would be super exciting. It's not the case anymore. At this point, people have already had Cyberpunk for weeks. They've already reviewed the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not like it used to be. So, I just stick to my standard streaming schedule, okay? Um, and we'll see how it goes, but all day... On Thursday, I'll be playing Cyberpunk, okay? Then on Friday, Cyberpunk again will be the main gameplay stream. And Friday night, um, I'll likely play either some Black Ops Cold War multiplayer or Assassin's Creed Valhalla, depending on how I'm feeling. We'll have to see. Uh, Saturday <clears throat> is up in the air. If we're all enjoying Cyberpunk a lot and I want to play it a third day in a row, I will. Or we could swing back to Yakuza 7 for some variety. So we'll see how things go with Cyberpunk. And based on how they go, that's how we'll judge what else I'll be doing over the weekend. Uh, the night streams over the weekend will be a variety between either Black Ops or Assassin's Creed. If I feel like doing Yakuza 7 on a late stream, I'll also do that. I'm kind of leaving that, that possibility open. So that way I can have variety on my late streams. We'll see. Um, and it'll be a balance between Cyberpunk and uh, Yakuza 7 on the early streams for the, the weekend. Okay? So... <clears throat> This is what I am planning for the next week, okay? Hope it sounds good to you. Obviously, the big talk is Cyberpunk, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, and to see, you know, how I think about what I think about this game after the ridiculous amount of weight, delays, hype, and everything, all right? Which, again, we're going to address in just a moment, all right? <clears throat> okay. Now, ladies and gents, if you take a look at... The stream stats leaderboard. You may notice something. Holy shit. What is going on with our sub count? Alright? So, a couple things have happened in the last 24 hours. First of all, people were very generous yesterday with subscriptions. In particular... <coughs> excuse me. Super new post-nasal drip today is bothering me. In particular, Hallelujah He Reigns gifted 150 subscriptions to the channel yesterday. So, that bolstered our numbers a little bit, alright? Then a few other people, um, a few other people also gifted subs, which was very nice. And some people, of course, did sub, you know, for themselves. And then last night, on my late night stream of Twin Mirror, some idiot came by and must have gifted like 30 or 40 troll subs, okay? What's a troll sub? It's when someone gets a subscription to an obviously brand new account that's a name that's something insulting to me. <laughs> Or is it tempted to be insulting to me? Because half the time it's something stupid that I don't even understand and it goes over my head. But, you know, the idiotic restreamers have their inside jokes and I think it's funny to have something pop up on my stream that makes no fucking sense to my viewing audience. So anyway, I'm assuming a lot of the subs that we got are real. Some of these may not be. I don't know how it works. But we are over 1,000 subscriptions on the channel for the first time in a year. <laughs> And that's pretty damned awesome, right? That is pretty damned awesome. Congratulations to, to those of you who were recipients of gifted subs in the last 24 hours because there were a lot of them, all right? There are a lot of gifted subs to the channel, and that means for the next month, many of you are going to have access to things like my over 40 emotes. You're all going to have chat crowns. It's going to be pretty cool because this happened last year. If you guys remember, uh, Emerald 7... <clears throat> Gifted a ridiculous amount of subs, and it was like for a month, everyone had a subscription, and everyone was super happy. Um, so it looks like we're going to have another another month like that, which will be pretty cool. This is a good month for that, obviously, 
We're finishing up all these brand, brand new game playthroughs on the PS5. We're starting up a few with Cyberpunk, etc. There's going to be my year-end Game of the Year awards countdown, where it's the best games of the year and the most disappointing games of the year, right? So a lot of special things going on. The, the Christmas event, obviously. You know, all the special stuff going on. So it's a very good time to be a sub, for sure. Okay? Um, <clears throat> very nice. So thank you to those who made that happen. I really appreciate that. Now... That means that we will be doing a special retrospective event marathon, uh, likely in late January, okay? And it means that I'm going to be trying to do a DSP Tries It episode during that as well, okay? Um, cool. That's exciting. In addition, um, that means that you guys will be able to nominate your favorite moments for my 12 years of being a content creator on the internet soon, but not yet. What we're going to do is we're going to wait for the Christmas events to happen. If you're not aware, okay, the Christmas events uh, are going to be on the 23rd and 24th of this month. On the 23rd of this month, it's going to be the Christmas Gaming Marathon, where I'll be dressed up in festive attire. I'll be drinking, that's right, some holiday ales, eggnog, and maybe even some hard liquor. We'll see. And I'll be playing a variety of games with you guys, including Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, as well as some Fall Guys. But in addition to that... um. <clears throat> It's going to be games that you guys nominate. So I'd like to draw attention to the fact that you can nominate games for this event by typing exclamation point Christmas into the stream chat. It'll bring up a link. It'll go to my forums. Please nominate games for this event. The more games you guys nominate, the better this event will be. Okay? So I hope you guys are excited for this. Now, in addition, on the 24th, that's Christmas Eve, I will be doing one gameplay stream. And this is going to be the special holiday edition of Ask the King. That is my Q&A show where I answer your questions. So if you'd like to ask me a question, it could be anything. It could be related to the holidays, obviously. It's Christmas Eve, maybe people want to ask me stuff about Christmas and traditions and things like that. Uh, or maybe it could be gaming related or maybe it could be, who knows? People ask me so many questions on Ask the King. Who knows what it'll be? So if you want to ask me questions <clears throat> for this special show and have a chance that I will answer it, please type exclamation point. Ask the King into the stream chat, and that will bring up the link by which you can do that, okay? <laughs> Sound good? Okay. Very good. So please, yes, remember, this is all interactive. The more that you guys contribute with your suggestions, the better my content will be. So please suggest games, please ask questions, and I'm excited for the Christmas week content. It's going to be some special fun stuff, all right? So... The reason I'm bringing this up is, number one, to spread awareness that you can do that. But also, there's no point in me opening a forum thread for you guys to nominate your favorite moments from, you know, from my, my past in order to do this retrospective event until we get past the Christmas stuff. So what we'll do is let's have our Christmas week celebrations. And then over the course of that next weekend at the end of the year there, I will put up the ability for you guys to nominate your favorite moments in my, my uh, 12 years of content creation. And then we'll get that going. Okay, so we'll go step by step here. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, right? Good stuff. All right, so thank you guys very much for all of your support recently. Please keep in mind, guys, I am an independent, okay? Um, I do not have sponsorship with anyone. No one sponsors my content. I do not have a streaming contract to stream exclusively with Twitch. I make no money just streaming, all right? I... I'm not a paid shill. I'm very, very honest with my opinions on my streams. I always have been. I always will be. And because of that, I rely on you, my viewing audience, to keep me afloat. Yes, this is my business. This is my job. And it is you through your crowdfunding efforts. You're the ones who allow me to continue to do what I love for a living. And I appreciate that. It's been 12 awesome years. And I enjoy what I do today more now than ever. And that's the God's honest truth. I like doing these interactive streams way better than I ever liked doing those YouTube videos way back in the day. All right? So, if you like who I am, if you like what I do, and you want to see it continue, and you want to see me continue to be successful, please contribute to the streams if you can today. There are three different ways. The primary ways to contribute would be either cheering with bits, subscribing to the channel, or tipping me. They're all appreciated, and they all help. But the way that would help the most right now would be tipping me. Uh, if you tip me, 
Those are funds that I can use right away for important stuff. In particular, tomorrow I'm going out to do a lot of stuff. And, you know, the funds would definitely help with that. I got to buy Cyberpunk this week. Later this month, I'm considering getting games like Immortals Phoenix Rising, maybe Age of Calamity. So, your funds help with all of that. So, if you tip me today, that would help. Now, if you cheer yourself, that also helps in the long term. It takes a little bit longer for me to see a positive uh, impact from those things. But they do help regardless. So, thank you in advance to anyone who does uh, consider contributing. As I say, uh, contributions are not mandatory on my streams whatsoever. You do not have to contribute to be here. I'm happy to hang out with you guys. Uh, my streams are free. They always will be. But contributions are greatly appreciated. They very much keep things going around here. So if you can contribute, please by all means do. And thank you in advance. Okay? Now we have our usual tips goals in effect. For $50 today, if we raise 50 bucks of tips, I'll put on the Gunner glasses. For $100, it will be vest time. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Yesterday, um, what vest did I wear yesterday on the early stream? Was it gray? I can't remember. <laughs> I genuinely can't remember what vest I wore yesterday. Was it the gray vest? Well, I'm sure someone's going to answer me here. It was gray? Okay, thank you. So, that would mean that today, all the vests are eligible except for the gray. That includes the beige, the blue, the platinum, the camo, and the red. I almost forgot the red. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, there's a, there's a fifth vest in there somewhere. So, yes, thank you guys in advance, and uh, appreciate the support. Now, I have two things I want to talk about on pre-stream today before we get to shout-outs. The first I want to gloss over, because I've talked about it until I've been blue in the face the past couple of days, all right? Very quickly, I promise you this is going to be fast. The Game Awards are in two days, excuse me, three days, the same day as Cyberpunk. Personally, I don't care much about them at all. Sadly, a lot of people do. And this year, it's almost become like the Game Awards are a battleground between journalists who literally kiss the shit out of The Last of Us 2's ass and seem to think this is the best game ever. Probably not for the best reasons. All right. And this cultish mentality around the game that Neil Druckmann and the game, other people involved in the game have basically created. That basically, if you don't like the game, you're a hater and you're a bigot. And therefore, they've been trying to mobilize people to vote for the game in the viewer's choice portion of the Game Awards. Okay, Neil Druckmann actually put out a tweet about this yesterday. And said, every vote that you give towards The Last of Us 2 sticks it to a hater and breaks their caps lock key. He actually said that on Twitter. Now, I called him out and said, this is incredibly irresponsible. You're mobilizing your fan base to vote for a game not because it's good, but because you're telling them that they're like doing some kind of, almost like a, a crusade. You're destroying internet trolls if you vote for The Last of Us 2. Like, how irresponsible is that? He's actually weaponizing his fan base in an immoral and irresponsible way. I called him out for this. Not surprisingly, I was attacked by people, saying that that's not what he meant, it's just a joke. To which I responded, sorry, I don't care if it was a joke. It's still irresponsible. There are people out there who don't get the joke because they're not that smart, and they're going to weaponize people to actually do things because this guy is joking about his haters, right? Uh, it's incredibly irresponsible for someone who is the head of a major AAA game studio, has clout and reach, to use his clout and reach to say shit like this. And this is why people are very upset with Neil Druckmann this year. Seriously. If this guy would have just kept his mouth shut all year, maybe this wouldn't have been a big deal. But considering the fact that literally all constructive criticism about Last of Us 2 was ignored, swept under the rug, and everyone who criticized the game was categorized as a hater, a misogynist, a bigot, someone who basically want, trolled him and gave him death threats, which isn't the case. There's tons of legitimate criticism of the game that no one wants to believe or address because they've created this cult-like mentality around the game that it's, it's above reproach, all right? So anyway, I called him out on Twitter for it. So did many other people. And this morning, he backpedaled. He backpedaled and deleted his tweet and said, all right, it was meant in jest, but it was irresponsible of me to do that, and I'm deleting the tweet because of it. So I'm actually going to give Neil some kudos this morning. At least he listened to the criticism, and at least he's, I feel he's learning. He's read that, and like, all right, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I get too, I get too, I, I used to be like that too, 
I would get so overexcited about, oh, look, I finally stuck it to one of my haters or something, right? That <clears throat> I would make everything about that. And then you lose the message. You realize, here's the other thing that I've realized over the years, okay? When you are a public person and you have a following, you have to be responsible with that power because it is power. When I, 10 years ago, was at the height of my popularity on YouTube, I very irresponsibly used my following and said things publicly that I regret now. You know what I mean? Like in 10 years, I've learned a lot on how to become a better person and not just to talk out of my ass. I used to say and do things in regards to games, in regards to gaming communities that I was completely misinformed or had no knowledge of, but I would still talk out of my butt. I would insult people. I would insult games. I was an idiot. All right. I didn't realize that I had such a following that that following could be weaponized for bad purposes. And I think there's a lot of people to this day that don't like me because of stupid shit that I said a decade ago that obviously today I look back on and I'm like, man, I was really an irresponsible idiot. And I hate to say it, sadly, not a lot of people seem to learn this lesson. There's so many content creators. There's so many people in the game community that are in prominent uh, places of power. They have followings, yet they talk out of their ass and as if what they say doesn't matter. It does. If you have a following... What you say matters. You have to be very careful about what you say because even if you're joking, it could be taken completely out of context and people could then have actual actions as a result of something you said that you didn't mean or, oh, you should have been smart enough to know that was just a, a sarcastic joke. Well, not everyone is. So you've got to be careful. You have to. And I've learned this over the years. It's something that was very hard for me to learn, but I did learn. Okay? So, I'm glad that Neil, at the very least... Backpedal deleted his irresponsible tweet. All right. Of course, immediately, people started attacking me again. Oh, Phil, he shouldn't have had to do that. It's like, it's seriously like the Druckmann Defense Force. Well, I'm telling you, these people have become indoctrinated into this fucking mindset that Neil Druckmann is the best content creator, excuse me, the best game creator out there. He is completely above reproach and criticism. And no matter what he does, he's in the right. And how dare you say anything about him? It's ludicrous. And people are just dumb fucks who do that. I'm sorry. They just are. It's different if you have, like, an actual legitimate uh, defense of him versus, oh, he just gets a pass because he's Neil Druckmann. I swear these people think that he's, like, gaming Jesus or something. He's not. He's a dude like anyone else, and he's just as fallible as all of us. And if he does something irresponsible, he should be called out with, uh, for it like everybody else. Okay? So that's that. Now I've covered it. Now, what I will say is this, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not been following along, the voting for the viewer's choice uh, category for the Game Awards has completely flip-flopped twice. All this week, Ghost of Tsushima was ahead of, of The Last of Us 2 by about maybe 2 to 3%. Now that we've gotten down to the final uh, day of voting, in fact, there's only, I think the voting's only open for about another 12 hours or whatever, okay, um... It's been back and forth, but Ghost of Tsushima is leading. Last I checked, they were leading by about 10%. And let me tell you something. The people on the internet who are the fanboys of Last of Us 2 are freaking out. I'm not kidding you. They're making up conspiracy theories. They think that the, the poll has been hacked. They're saying that this is because Redditors started viral threads. It's the most hilarious thing to see. Because these people cannot believe that the common gamer didn't think The Last of Us 2 was the best game of the year, despite the fact that very much so people were vocal about how they did not like the plot of this game because these people were in a cult that ignored that criticism. So they can't possibly believe that people would like Ghost of Tsushima more than Last of Us 2. They actually are making up crazy conspiracy theories about why this is happening, okay? If you're interested in voting, you can go to thegameawards.com. And there's a tab that you can click on that shows the categories. Go to the viewer, I think it's viewer's choice or viewer's voice category and you can vote. But you have to vote quickly. I think it's only open for about another 12 hours. And I will say this, vote for whatever game you think was legitimately the best this year. The category includes Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Hades, and I actually forget what the fifth game is. But by the way, none of those games are basically in the running. It's between The Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. Everything else is so far behind. There's no way those things are going to catch up today. All right. So you vote legitimately for what you feel is the best game. Don't vote because you're sticking it to the haters or because Druckmann told you to. Vote for something you liked. It's that simple. All right. 
Fair enough? Okay. And now I'm done talking about it. Let's move on to the actual hot topic of the day, Cyberpunk 2077. Because, ladies and gentlemen, today the review embargo was lifted, and everyone is putting out their early reviews of the game. Now, before I even get to that, okay, one thing I have to state. This was interesting because there were some very unique criteria that were given for people to review this game. First of all, absolutely no one received a console version of the game to review. The only version of the game that was given out was PC. And a lot of people are pissed about this because people want to know how the game's going to perform on consoles and nobody knows. Not a single person has played this on PS4 or Xbox One yet. So, you have to take these reviews with a grain of salt. You're only getting a PC review. Nobody knows how this is going to play on a console. Okay? And the reason why I think this is very controversial is because, guess what? That's one of the major reasons why CD Projekt Red cited the delays that they had this year. They said the console versions were not performing well and they needed to give more time to polish those versions. So then you not allowing people to review those console versions could be a major problem, okay? <clears throat> now, another thing. These versions of the game that people reviewed on PC are not the finished game. There's already been stated there's going to be a very large patch that will be applied to the game on release day. So this version that everyone was playing to review is not the finished version of the game. Hence, my argument to everyone, okay, I don't understand why advanced review copies exist. These people who reviewed the game today didn't really play the final version of the game. There's very possible that this last month of crunch that we all heard about in so many times controversially in gaming news outlets uh, added significant improvements to the stability and performance of the game, and none of that will be actually seen in the reviews because the reviews didn't have any of that day one patch. All right? So... Explain to me why pre-release copies exist, because I don't think you can justify it with this game. Seriously. I don't think you can actually justify putting this game out early to reviewers, all right? In addition to that, on top of all this, CD Projekt Red put out an unprecedented uh, limitation on people who reviewed the game early. Absolutely nobody could use game footage except... Game footage that was put out by CD Projekt Red. Alright, allow me to repeat that with a little bit more detail so you understand it. Okay? CD Projekt Red didn't want anyone to capture game footage and put it out before the game's out, period. Even for reviews, which almost always have been widely accepted as a valid, fair use of game footage. CD Projekt Red said, no, you cannot do that. Why? Are they afraid of something? Are they afraid that two, three days before release, people would actually see how the game's performing and then be turned off? Like, what is it? And the thing is, there's a non-disclosure agreement. So, no one can talk about it. <laughs> Not until when the game actually releases on Thursday can anyone actually show their first-hand experiences with the game at all. So, because of that, all these early reviews essentially are very similar to the reviews for The Last of Us 2, where they cannot give a full opinion on the game because they haven't played the console version, they didn't get the day one patches, and they can't even show game footage to explain what they're talking about. All right? So all that being said, let's actually talk about some of these reviews, okay? I've seen a few different kinds of review, all right? Some pretty scathing, honestly. Some kissing the game's butt. It all depends. I believe... The, the one review that everyone's going crazy about right now is GameSpot, because GameSpot, major gaming media outlet, gave it a 7 out of 10, all right? Some other places, like IGN, gave it a 9 out of 10. So, here seems to be the general consensus. The game is good. I don't think anyone's saying the game is bad. People are agreeing the game is good. It's a fun experience. But, but, number one, it does not have nearly as much content as other CD Projekt Red games. I think people were, were, again, as I said, people were expecting Witcher-level content. And that's not present in this game, all right? The report is that you can beat the story in 20 hours. If you go and do side content, one person reported they did do some side content. It took them about 28 hours to beat. 
but that they didn't want to do all the side content because it wasn't all good. Like they were saying, yes, some of it was good, but it didn't seem to be meaningful to the game. It was just like uh, side content that was there if you wanted to do extra stories and stuff, but it didn't really matter. It wasn't tied in to the plot of the game. So he did some side content, then he stopped doing it and just finished the game. That was about 28-hour playthrough. Okay? Now, I guess if you do all the content in the game, you could even go as well as long as like 30 to 40 hours. But do you see what I'm saying? Witcher 3 was a game that if you did all the content, you probably play it for about 80 hours or longer, right? Hell, the DLCs for Witcher 3 were super duper long. So, I think what's happened here, and I've, I've said this already, I said, you have to understand this is not Witcher. This game is not Witcher. This is a brand new IP. This is a different style of game. This is a new IP where they're doing something for the first time. <clears throat> I have to emphasize here, <clears throat> okay? Witcher 3 was the third game in a franchise, all right? The third game. So why would you expect from the first installment of a new IP the same exact kind of performance and content that it took them three games to get hammered down? You understand what I'm saying? I think people have gone into this with such a high hopes for the game because Witcher 3 was so good and because people seem to have, again, this fanboy defense idea about CD Projekt Red as a game developer that sadly... They're going to be very disappointed if this game isn't like Witcher 3. And apparently from these early reviews, it's not. Okay? Now, another common thread of these early reviews seems to be that the game is incredibly buggy. People are finding all kinds of bugs and issues in the game. And not to saying that they're completely destroying the experience. But it's definitely something that you're. it's very noticeable in the game. And it just screams like this game needed more polish before it came out. Okay? Now, here's the thing. Everyone who's playing this game did not play the real game. They played the early review version without the day one patches. Will the day one patches fix a lot of the bugs people are addressing in the reviews? Who knows? But again, this could be something that's completely eliminated by the final game and we'll all be playing a much better gameplay experience than these guys got because they played an early version. <clears throat> so why did they get an early version? Why do these early reviews exist? Who fucking knows, right? Lastly, okay... One thing that seems to be a common thread in everyone's review, everyone's saying the world looks really nice, but in reality, it has no meaning. Like, you'll walk through this world and you'll see some nice visuals, you'll see a good environment, but in general, apparently the world is just there as to be environmental. Like, there's no interaction with the stuff going on in the environment. A lot of it is just happening around you, but it's completely meaningless. So even though they spent a lot of time making this vibrant cyberpunk city world, right? Night City or Nightline, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, there's really not much to it. It's just a backdrop. Okay? Um, so, I mean, I can understand that. Like, maybe people were looking for this insanely vibrant, interactive world. Again, they're looking at Witcher 3, where everywhere you went, you could interact with every NPC and, and you know every piece of thing was so interesting and maybe you just can't do that in cyberpunk okay um i don't know but again these are common threads in, the, in some of the reviews that i read now some of the more critical reviews like the GameSpot review <clears throat> are very critical of the game basically saying the game is too immature the game has too much content that i would actually call it grand theft auto content what do i mean by that i mean sexualized content immature content you know, this kind of very childish teenage jokes about sex and stuff like that. But in particular, they're actually calling out cultures from around the world being misrepresented, saying that there's a lot of very generalized cultural humor and representation in the game that actually certain cultures would be insulted at. I have no idea what that could be because I, don't, I didn't play the game, obviously, and I have no idea what they could have put in there. You know, now who knows? Who knows what this is going to be, all right? Maybe what they did is they actually just stole my video from my Dynasty Warriors playthrough where I commentated over the intro FMV about, you know, Asian stuff, and they just played that in the game. And if that's the case, I completely understand. I mean, that's basically career-ending. Those guys are done. That whole game's going to get blacklisted. There's no way anyone would ever play it, okay? But I don't know. You know, I don't know what exactly they're addressing and i don't think we're gonna know until we play the game but maybe they did go for some really cheesy jokes and really you know what i mean like 
very dumb stereotypical shit that's cringeworthy. Or maybe the GameSpot reviewer is just a sensitive snowflake. <laughs> right? Because here's the thing. That kind of stuff is very present in the Grand Theft Auto series. And I don't recall ever anyone giving Grand Theft Auto shit for it. Then again, Grand Theft Auto V came out a long time ago. And we haven't had woke reviewers reviewing shit in a long time or since then. You know what I mean? Like, maybe if Grand Theft Auto V came out today, the woke reviewers would actually be destroying the game. I don't know. Okay? Um, so, for me, I take this review with a grain of salt. But at the very same times, um, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm very interested to see what this game is going to be at this point. Okay? Um, my main concerns are as follows. Number one, I'm playing it on console. You guys know that. I'm going to be playing the PS4 version. And by the way, I talked about this on stream yesterday or, yesterday or the day before. And some people were actually shocked. There is no next-gen console version of Cyberpunk yet. CD Projekt Red outright said that will not even be existing until maybe March of 2021. So there's no PlayStation 5 upgraded version. It's just the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One version. And if you play it on PS5 or Xbox Series S or X, you maybe get some improved frame rate, improved loading times, but you will not get better visuals, better graphics, etc. It's just one version of the game per console. That's all that exists. Okay? So, one of my concerns, being very honest here, is that this game is going to run like shit on consoles. Can you imagine, with all the great games I've been playing on my PlayStation 5 recently, I'm playing a AAA game, right? Supposed to be, you know, true, you know, generation-ending masterpiece, and the game is going to run sub-30 frames per second on my PS5. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if the game crashes constantly, looks like shit is full of bugs? Like, this is not going to be a good look for CD Projekt Red. Because, you know, again, one of the major reports was they delayed the game because the console version didn't work well. Well, that's not good. I hope that's not the case. Seriously. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen. What I would hope is that this day one patch that's supposed to be like some 40 gigs or something insane is going to fix a lot of the bugs and issues that were reported in the PC version of the game. Okay? Now here's my other hope. Is that I actually hope that the game is fun regardless of the fact that it's not going to be Witcher. I, I did not go into this expecting it to be Witcher. I was expecting it to be a new thing. And if the game is 20 to 30 hours long, and I have a great time with a 20 to 30 hour long game, you know what I mean? Like, it's a good story, and the side content's fun, and we have a good ride. That's great. I don't care that maybe it's shorter than the than the previous CD Projekt Red game that everyone kissed the butt of. Um, sadly, I'm going to be honest with everyone, I really don't feel this game is going to live up to the hype. I think people created such an insane hype level around this game for no reason. People who immersed themselves in the game already, already fucking know everything about the game, and the game got delayed so many times, and it just it builds up that fervor and that expectation even more. Um, I'm glad that I didn't have an expectation. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I'm not going into it saying it's got to be Witcher Three. I just want to hope that it's just a fun game. That's all I care about. But it seems to me like people are going to be upset, especially those who are expecting this game to be an insanely uh, long game. And it seems to me like it will not be an insanely long game. I mean, right, just to give you guys some perspective right now, okay? Right now, my playthroughs of Yakuza 7 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla are about 20 to 25 hours long. And I'm not even close to the end of those games. Maybe I'm, what, I'm a third through them, halfway through them maybe? Um, my playthrough of Demon's Souls, I believe, was 24 hours long. Okay, and of course I sucked at it and I died a lot, but I think you're seeing the point that I'm making here. People were looking at this game like this was supposed to be the second coming of the Messiah of gaming and was supposed to be like this amazing, you know, oh my god, cream of the crop game. And it doesn't look like it's going to be. It looks like it's going to have some bugs. It looks like it's going to have some issues. Uh, and the game's not going to be super long like people had hoped. Oh, I want to immerse myself in the world. Okay, see you in 30 hours. What? I can't immerse myself in a 400-hour playthrough. What's really funny to me is that there was this this story, what was it, last week or the week before, where there was an actual game tester who was playing the game. I think he was supposed to be the head QA guy at CD Projekt Red. And he was being interviewed, and he said, yeah, my, my, 
my playthrough currently is ranking at like 146 hours. And people were like, what? How 146 hours? The game has 146 hours of content? And he clarified, but everyone ignored the clarification. He was like, no, 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 no. He's like, I'm a tester. What I need to do is I need to go through the game and I need to play every little nuanced part of the game over and over. So what he's essentially doing, he's drawing the playthrough out as long as he can. He's doing the repetitive shit that you don't need to do over and over, but he's doing it ad nauseum to see if he can break the game. He's a QA guy. That's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to find ways to break the game. So he was actually making his playthrough overly long, doing shit that's not meaningful to see if the game would break down because of it. But people reported it like, there's 146 hours of content in Cyberpunk. Like, what are you talking about, you fucking idiot? You don't even listen to the guy you're interviewing? You know, like... Anyway. <laughs> that being said, um, I'm excited for Thursday. I'm excited for this playthrough. It sounds to me like it's going to be something fun and different that we're going to balance in with everything else I'm doing. And, you know, I'm, I am very positive, positively looking forward to it. At the same time, I'm not going into it with the expectations everyone else does. I'm very curious, once the game releases everywhere, PC, console, once the final patch comes out, and once people get their hands into it this weekend, I'm very curious to see what will happen with things like the Metacritic score, when people actually start putting out their reviews with game footage. Like, what's going to happen? I don't know. But this will be a very, very exciting week. All right? It will. It will be a very exciting week. For gaming to see what happens so hope you guys will be along for the ride later this week when i play cyberpunk now here's the thing some people have already said well phil i'm not going to be there for the initial streams because i'm going to be playing cyberpunk myself and i don't want to spoil fair enough that's fine likely you guys will be way ahead of me in just a couple of days and here's why yes i am playing cyberpunk all day on thursday and yes it's going to be my major gameplay stream on friday but outside of that likely I'll be balancing Cyberpunk with Yakuza. And because of that, you guys, after just a few days, will likely be way ahead of me. And I hope that if you will not join me for those initial streams, you'll at least come by for the streams maybe later on this weekend or next week. You know what I mean? This is going to be a playthrough. It's going to take a while for me. 20 to 30 hour game will take me probably two, three weeks to beat. Especially balancing it with other stuff. Okay? Now, in addition, please keep in mind, my playthrough will be live on DSP Gaming so that when you have an opportunity to get caught up you can you don't have to watch it live if you're you know but if you don't want to spoil go check it out on dsp gaming but if you do do that hey if you can please contribute in another way than ad revenue because the sadly the ad revenue is almost nothing on youtube and even then half the time my videos get claimed so i wouldn't be shocked if i make no money on the playthrough <laughs> i very rarely make much money at all on youtube so this would not be a shocking turn of events for me okay <laughs> Okay. All right. That's what I had to talk about on pre-stream today. So let's get to shout outs, everybody. <clears throat> here we go. So we're taking a look here. First of all, overnight, we had a few cheers coming in. We had Golden Colts who did a couple of cheers. He says, if you only had $30 to buy groceries for a week, what would you get? About $4 a day plus enough for sales tax? I mean, that's a tough question. I would just basically have to look for the most discounted shit possible. You need meat with protein in it, so you got to probably find some low-grade meats to eat. Um, you're going to need grains, right? So you got to look for some El Cheapo grains or bread or something to, you know, maybe make your own rice, maybe. Rice is usually really cheap, right? So maybe make a bunch of dishes with rice, like cheap meat, rice, and maybe some frozen vegetables that are cheap. And that way you can make... The thing is, with, with a very limited budget, you probably got to eat the same thing over and over, right? And the, quick, the thing is, of course, the easy... Oh, I'm just going to buy a bunch of ramen noodles and shit. That's terrible for your body. You would kill your body with sodium and shit. You don't want to do that. So that's what I would think. Probably just try to get some El Cheapo, you know, uh, frozen veggies that are cheap. Uh, some rice. You know, maybe some meat for a stir fry or something. You could do that like two, three times in the week. Beans. Beans are actually high protein and they're pretty cheap. So maybe get some beans in there. Something like that, I would say. Or maybe... Maybe you could spend like $15 on ingredients and make like a pot of soup. And soup can last. You can eat that for two, three days during a week, right? That could be too. So that's probably what I would try to do. <clears throat> Golden Colts cheered again. He said, do you think there's a difference between Starbucks that you actually get at Starbucks or the ones that are bottled and are in coolers at the supermarket? Um, well, here's the thing. Depends on what you're talking about. 
if you're talking the pure coffee, like, oh, the, the cold brew iced coffee you buy at the store to drink at home versus the cold brew coffee you get at the actual business. Probably not much difference. I think the one at the, at the business, they, they nitro brew it, meaning it actually has a little bit of carbonation to it or whatever. Um, but outside of that, likely it's going to taste almost the same if it's made from the same ingredients. Um, if you're talking the drinks that have a bunch of shit in them, like they, they pre-sell frappuccinos and shit at the store, that's nothing like what you get at the actual place. If you order a frappuccino at Starbucks, they're going to blend ice with coffee and other ingredients fresh for you, and it's a frozen drink. If you get the frappuccino at the store, it's just a bottle of coffee with milk or creamer in it and flavoring. It's very, very different, not even close, okay? So it depends. It depends on what you're getting. If you're just talking pure coffee, chances are it's going to be very similar. I mean, here's the thing. You can get K-Cup or, or the coffee grounds. You could brew Starbucks coffee at your own home, and it's pretty much essentially the same quality as if you just got a hot cup of coffee at the store. There's really no, not that much difference. It really comes to the specialty products, right? Are you going to get a, a espresso shot? Are you going to get a frappuccino with a bunch of extra shit in it, right? That's when things start to get a little different. So that's my take. Sambuca2020 did a 150-bit cheer and said, Hi, Phil. Hello, Sambuca. How are you doing? Um, that is the first cheer of this stream that happened during the live stream. So let's get Sambuca up on the leaderboard. There we go. Thank you, Sambuca. It's good to see you today, by the way. Um, that boy Dave Five resub for two months. It's a two month hype. Thank you very much to that boy Dave Five for the resub. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Darkside Elon cheered. He says a mod did a poll the other night. I want improvements. The streams could be made in 2021. The overwhelming winner was game selection. What are your thoughts? I personally think when you're playing Banjo Tooie, Animal Crossing, Minecraft, and Morrowind earlier in the year, it was a bit too much for us. Do you think that playing a uh, customer, do you think a paying customer should have more influence on games that you play? All right, first of all, the entire premise of this cheer is wrong. This is not what happened. The poll was what is the thing that Phil has most improved in 2020? And the answer was game selection. So you're criticizing me for my game selection in 2020, but the poll was basically stating that my game selection has improved in 2020. So actually the poll is completely the opposite of what you're saying and you're being very disingenuous with this cheer. So nice try, all right? Now in particular, to answer your part about it here, where you're talking about Banjo-Tooie, Animal Crossing, Minecraft, and Morrowind, okay? Out of those playthroughs three of them are chill streams animal crossing minecraft and morrowind and those were all late night streams which were meant to be chill stream content one of those was daytime content banjo tooie which was a major retro game and by the way that was a game chosen by the viewers that was a viewer's choice event viewer's choice <laughs> okay uh, i didn't pick that it was viewer's choice where you guys wanted that game and that's why i played it so you're saying you're basically saying I didn't like the fact that you were playing a game that the viewers picked for you to play and three games that were meant to balance out your daytime content with chill night content. So, Dark Side Elon, the first thing I will say to you is if you, uh, you have to understand that I'm a variety streamer. And if you don't like the stuff that I'm playing on certain streams, you don't have to be here for those streams. This is not like a television show where if you miss an episode, you're now out of the loop. You know what I'm saying? This is very much a, sh a, a, a a stream where you can miss a certain playthrough and come back later on when I'm playing something you like. That's your choice. That's your prerogative. No one's forcing you to be here for stuff you don't like. <clears throat> Sorry if at one point this year I was doing too much chill content for you, but I'm fairly sure that during the daytime I wasn't also doing giant chill content streams, so... I don't know. I think that, sadly, your criticism is a little bit skewed here just because you personally didn't like a few games I was playing. Now, in addition, he says, do you think the paying customer should have more influence on games that you play? There is no such thing as a paying customer. It doesn't exist. This is not, my, my streams are not a transactional business where you purchase content. That doesn't happen. All right? I am someone who puts out content on a daily basis for free. And it will always be like that. No one is purchasing content, okay? If you want to crowdfund said content, if you like the free content I'm putting out and you want to support my ability to continue 
to create it, then by all means, please contribute. Cheer, sub, tip, you know, contribute to my Patreon. Get a t-shirt off my Teespring. That stuff helps me tremendously. That's why I'm here. That's how my business operates. But that is not a transactional purchase where you're buying something. There are no customers to my business. So I think you really are misunderstanding how things work. And you have completely miscategorized and, and, and just said so many erroneous statements in this cheer that I am now going to strike this cheer from my memory because it is so ludicrously bad. Try again. Tarantula MS 2018 has sent me $5. It says, hey, Phil, I'm about to finish your Mass Effect 2 playthrough from earlier this year on YouTube. I'm wondering if you ever did an Evil Run playthrough in any of the Fallout or Elder Scrolls games. <clears throat> I believe I did a Renegade Femshep playthrough of Mass Effect 1 many years ago. All right? I don't even know how long ago that was, but I remember, I recall doing that, I believe around 2014, 2015. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's when I did it because I think it was when I was doing direct capture or just starting to do direct capture. And that was one of the reasons why I replayed the game because I wanted to do a direct capture playthrough not using my shitty camera like I used to. <clears throat> okay. But outside of that, the only other one I can think of in an RPG where I out outright 100% went evil was Knights of the Old Republic. And that was from very early this year. Right? Yeah, that was very early on this year. I did Dark Side playthrough. But outside of that, um, no. I, 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 you know, usually, on my first run through any particular game, I'll try to do the good guy choices. And then maybe later on, I'll do the bad guy choices. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> Andy Dick tipped me a dollar. and says, I'm not a snack at all. I am the whole damn meal, David. You ain't being slick. What the fuck does that mean? I have no idea, but thank you for the dollar tip, Andy Dick. You keep being you. Andy, you keep being you. It's the best thing you're good at. <laughs> um, Snow Carl tipped me a dollar. Says, I've been following your Twitter activity. I agree with everything you said about Last of Us 2. Have you considered ever going on a podcast to discuss it from your perspective or maybe a video with the quartering? It would be great. Absolutely no one has contacted me for this. No one wants me on their show. No one cares about my opinions. In fact, I've been told to stop talking about it, to, sh to sh delete my tweets, to shut down my Twitter, to shut the fuck up, and just play games and, and know my role and shut my mouth and stay in my lane. And I'm very sad. Because I thought you guys cared. <laughs> no, anyway. No, no, no one's asking me to be on their show. I don't think anyone cares. I... I, I Talk about my opinion on my own shows, my own streams. You guys are the audience who care about that. I don't think anyone else's audience care about my opinions, so that's why I haven't been invited anywhere. So there you go. West, no, excuse me. Wasteland Raider, 1994, has resubscribed for five, mo four mo five months. He says, hey, Phil, looking forward to a good day of Yakuza 7. Are you going to be playing Immortal Phoenix Rising? I just started playing it. It's surprisingly good. As I've said... It's on my radar for this month. We're going to see how things go with my current playthroughs, especially with Cyberpunk just starting up later in the week. And depending on how things go with those playthroughs, that'll help determine uh, what I actually end up playing later this month. There may be an opening for a game like that. I'm interested in it. So we'll see what happens. I'm not promising it, but I am interested in it. Okay? Just so happens I'm so busy with the other playthroughs from PS5, I haven't had a chance to start it up yet. Okay? Okay? Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Well, it looks to me this morning I got a bunch of surprise, surprise, express checkout tips, which likely are fake, and taking a look at this, Okay. Well, I'm just going to take a look. Let me see here. Sorry, but this has been an ongoing problem with me where, sadly, people are using Express Checkout to send me tips. Um, and I don't recognize these people. Okay. Okay. <sighs> 
Like, for example, I actually know for a fact I got two tips from the same person. Okay. But they use two different names when they sent the tips. <laughs> so, is this just someone who's doing a few casual tips to my stream? Or are these going to be fucking chargebacks later? You know? So, I should say this. I actually said this on my late stream last night. Let me say this up front to everybody here. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen. If. If. You like my content. Okay? If you want to support my content and you feel that my content is something worthwhile to you and you want to tip me, please go the extra mile and please create a registered PayPal account. And here's why. When someone creates a registered PayPal account, that adds extra protections for the streamer. It covers me in the case where someone tries to commit fraud because when you have a registered PayPal account, it actually uses your real information, your bank account, your real name, your email address, etc. Now, I don't see any of that information. I want you to understand that. I don't see any of that personal information. But when someone tips me from a registered PayPal account and says, yes, this is a registered and verified PayPal account, that protects me from fraud. All right. Right now, I'm staring at three tips that in the last 15 minutes, were, or excuse me, the last 40 minutes were given to me. They're all express checkout, anonymous, unprotected tips from people I've never heard of before. And likely, these are trolls. Likely, this is a person who is doing troll activity, you know, doing tips that are not legit, and there's no way for me to discern. You know, I can tell you right now, these, these people are not in the chat here. I'm going to check this one out right now. These people are not in the chat. Yep. So, if they're not in the chat, and they can't confirm that their tip is real, I'm just going to judge it like it's not. You know? So, if you're someone who did just tip me, and you did it anonymously, and it's a name I don't recognize, it's not someone from the chat, I'm refunding it. All right, and you have to understand that that I can't I can't take that risk. This is a, a big risk for me, that you know come down the line a, a week, a month, two months, all of a sudden I get charge back, charge back, charge back, and it fucking empties out my account. And sometimes I'll be honest, sometimes you get wrapped up in a big situation trying to prove if it was legit or not. There's sometimes there could be fees involved and shit. It's a big mess. It's a huge fucking mess. And I can't, you know, again, I just went through a situation last month. My PayPal account was completely fucked over because of this kind of stuff. I can't have this happen to me again. So, listen, I appreciate if you want to contribute to the streams. But if you're going to tip me, all right, I'm going to ask, please create a registered and verified PayPal account. I mean, if you're a regular here, it's a no-brainer to do so anyway, okay? Um, if you're going to be a regular contributor, that way I know... It's not someone impersonating someone. It's not someone trying to cause trouble. All right? I would ask that you please do that. All right? Um, if you're someone who wants to contribute and you want to do it completely anonymously and you don't want to go through registering a PayPal account, then don't tip me. Please, you can cheer, you can sub, you can do all these other things. Don't tip me. Contribute via a different way. I just, I can't deal with all these problems with my fucking PayPal at this point. Seriously. So please, guys... Uh, don't tip me if that's the case. If you can't go through the extra step, please go ahead and, and contribute in another way. All right? But again, thank you to those who are regulars, and thank you to those who have done so, uh, because that helps a ton. All right? I don't like doing live fucking tip audits during my gameplay. I just want to be able to enjoy the game, and I, being derailed like that is very frustrating. Okay? So there were just three different tips I just had to refund, because they were all anonymously done, express checkout, names that aren't anything... Uh, that are uh, familiar to me. So, you know, it is what it is. Ladies Man 2166 just did a 100 bit cheer. He says, I wanted to let you know CD Projekt Red announced Cyberpunk will have a streamer's mode that disables copywritten music so you won't get taken down by Twitch's DMCA. I finished my final exams and passed all my classes. The first semester of Mortuary School is finished. Congratulations, Ladies Man. We've been with Ladies Man this entire process so far. Where he applied, he was accepted to mortuary school, he went in for his first semester. I hope everything's going well for you. Alright, and, um, you know, I'm actually interested to be in the loop about this. And know what's going on with you with this, because I don't know anything about it. And it's certainly something unique and interesting to me. So, 
Congratulations. Hopefully you did well. I hope you aced your exams. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for the cheer, by the way. Uh, Preach has resubscribed for 14 months. Thank you very much, Preach, for a 14-month resub. I appreciate that. 50-bit Quan charities have really changed. Two nights ago, you were giving shout-outs to cud-chewing mouth breathers. Last night, you were talking about the illegal restreamers again. Yes, I have definitely changed. The only reason I talk about that is because people bring it up, and it's pertinent to something that people bring up on an interactive stream. I do not make the entirety of my content about it. I have absolutely changed. So, nice try, smart guy. Then he cheered again. He said, do you think all the good games in the poll are a scheme to split the vote in such a way that the, the lone SJW game Last of Us 2 wins? Kind of like when a third-party candidate splits the vote of the left or right so the other side wins? No. Oh, hold on. No. Okay. Uh, Snatch Commander Cheer, he says, Now that Druckmann has apologized to remove his joke tweet, will you remove your joke tweet? Ask people to vote for Ghost of Tsushima and apologize like him. You said people are stupid and might not get jokes online. No. Because my tweet was not a joke. I said in my tweet, I felt Ghost of Tsushima was the best game in that lineup and that if you feel the same way, please vote for it. That's what I said in my tweet. That's not mobilizing my viewership to vote and stick it to the haters, which is what fucking Druckmann did. He didn't even say vote because the game was good. He said stick it to my haters because he was being an irresponsible asshole. All right? That's not what my tweet said, so I don't need to delete my tweet. No one called me out for my tweet because there's nothing hypocritical about it. However, you are a dummy. Daner2013 has resubscribed for six months. Thank you very much, Daner, for a six-month resub. Good to see you. Thank you for the support. Carlton Jr. Uh, has done a 50-bit cheers and not defending the game. Two out of three of the low reviews seem to give the game a low review because of gender politics. I don't think that that should be in a video game review. These game journalists are getting out of hand, in my opinion. Well, there you go. The politics of gender can be a real mind bender. Should gender politics be a part of game review? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's continue on. Um, knows nobody did a hundred bit cheers. Have you decided if you want to be corporate nomad or street kid in cyberpunk? I don't even know what that means. I told you I have not spoiled myself at all with these games. I don't know what's going on with them. I did not look into the content and spoil anything. So. This will be completely cold playthrough. Not a blind playthrough, which is offensive according to Twitch. I would never do a blind playthrough. But I'm going to do a cold playthrough and see what happens. I don't even know the difference between those classes, nor do I care at this point. I'll care on Thursday when I play the game. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Georgie Nikoloff tipped me a dollar. Says, as a European, I'm curious what's the main obstacle to running a small business in the States. Do you consider yourself a successful businessman? What do you use as a measurement? Dude, there's so much to it. And I mean it. Like, so many people jump into it thinking it's an easy thing. And then when they actually get smacked with the reality of how annoying shit is uh, here in the States, you know, um, taxes are a major problem. Because depending on where you live in the country, the way you can do your taxes is completely fucking different. It's really fucking stupid. But it's true. Um... <sighs> You know, just so much. If you have employees, oh my God. Don't even get me started. If you have employees in a business, it's a major nightmare. I know because they keep sending me the information about it. I'm like, I don't have any employees. Stop. Stop bothering me. <laughs> but if you have employees, apparently there's all kinds of shit you're supposed to do. All this legwork and extra work is like, oh my God. Um, you know, I don't even want to get too much into it, but it's basically, it's not easy. There's a lot to juggle. There's a lot of information, you know, depending, again, where you are, you have to research a bunch of shit. Uh, they certainly don't make it easy. Oh, uh, let's see here. Someone took me a dollar named Bra and said I took the pussy way out playing Old Monk yesterday. I gave up after only two attempts. That's not even true, right? There was way more than two attempts. Right? I did at least... Let me think about this. Last time around when I played, it was two attempts. 
This time around when I play, it was at least two to three attempts, right? And then the game crapped out. Like, I look how people blame me because their beloved game developer from Soft made a game with issues, right? I didn't make Demon Souls, all right? I didn't. And last time around, when I was failing at Old Monk, and it said, oh, you're going to fight AI, I reset the game to purposely make it so I did not fight AI so I could challenge more humans. But how long do you think I'm going to waste time on this shit? I'm a streamer and a content creator, and I'm not here to cater to your personal fetish of seeing me lose to the Old Monk because the PvP is so broken in this game. You know, I understand you probably have these weird fetishes, right? You probably, like, put, like, little clamps on your nipples and stuff. And you keep that shit to yourself. If you want to see someone get punished by a broken-ass fucking game over and over, go watch someone who likes to do that kind of content. All right? I did it for over two hours. That was enough of that shit. I don't need to do it any further. I don't, I'm not here to cater to your disgusting personal tastes. All right? In general, the playthrough was great. I failed a ton because I'm not great at the game. It was entertaining. It was fun to see the great graphics of the game. And that's that. It's over. Time to move on, bro. And by the way, be very careful with those clamps on your nipples. It's a very sensitive area. All right? Holy fuck. What is your problem? Anyway, Stinkin' Burrows did a 230-bit cheer. Thank you very much, Stinkin' Burrows. That is the biggest cheer of the day. Let's get that up on the leaderboard. Two hundred forty? Two hundred thirty. Two hundred thirty bit cheer. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Uh Snow Carl tipped me a dollar. I spoke to Jeremy. I hope I'll get back to me with substantial soon about doing a vid or podcast with you in regards to Last of Us Two. Really looking forward to seeing you do opinion driving out in the mainstream again. He seems interested. Fair enough. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um, Andy Dick tipped the dollars. Which songs do you know by Joe Walsh? I don't know any songs by Joe Walsh. So that's a quick answer. There you go. Thanks for the dollar tip. 50-bit Quan cheers. Is the way your droopy jowl shake and jiggle when you do the no gimmick looks really cool. I like that. Fuck you. Okay, there we go. Um, Rob on Wheels did a thousand-bit cheer. He says... Hope you're feeling okay, mate. I hope you know that I will always have your back. Thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate that. Let's get Rob up on the leaderboard for the top cheer of the day. Okay. Jethro's main. Did a 50 bit cheer. He says, you see people are voting for The Last of Us 2 because you asked them to vote for Ghost of Tsushima just because it was you? Sounds good. Sounds good. That was my ply all along. So you guys don't understand. I, am, I play the ultimate long game of 4D chess. Secretly, I am Neil Druckmann's biggest fan. And because I know there's such a polarizing view of me out there that there are people who hate me so much, they'll do the opposite of what I say. So I've been criticizing Druckmann so much, right? This Now they're going to they're gonna support Last of Us. That's my plan. That's the long game. You just don't understand because you're living here in a 3D world and I'm dimensions above you, bro. You just don't understand, man. Ladies' man just cheered again. He says, What I'm wondering is why they would remake Demon's Souls if From Software turned off the servers so we can't help help with killing bosses. Um, well, I think you're a little confused, ladies' man. Here's what happened, okay? Demon's Souls originally was a game that was financed by Sony, okay? From Software was the developer, but the game was 100% produced and financed by Sony. So the game was 100% a Sony exclusive, okay? After the success of Demon Souls, From Software went on to make Dark Souls on their own, okay, not financed by Sony, meaning those games could be cross-platform, okay? They took a lot of the elements out of Demon Souls to make Dark Souls. You see a lot of similarities between the games, okay? Um, then about, I would say, what was it, about three years ago? It was a big announcement that the Demon Souls multiplayer servers, the original Demon Souls, back on PlayStation 3, that the multiplayer servers were going to be turned off forever. There would be no more ability to summon, no more invasions, no more messages around the game world. Everything was going to be turned off for good. Okay? So I wanted to do a, a run of the game 
that was online because I was like, man, it's the last time you'll ever be able to do this because back then we had no idea that Demon Souls was being remade for the PlayStation 5. I did my run, and guess what? The servers already didn't work. Even though they hadn't been turned off, they already were malfunctioning, and therefore there was no summons, there was no online capabilities at all. It was basically an offline playthrough, okay? Um, so fast forward to present day, now we know the reason that those original servers were turned off is because they were making a remake for the PlayStation 5, and it was not from software who made this one. It was Blue Point Games. All they did is they copy-pasted the code with better graphics and eight-way roll. That was really the only significant changes to the game. Everything else remained the same. Okay? So that being said, um, I think you have a little bit of a misunderstanding. The servers are working on the new version. You can still summon. People can help you. It's the old original version of the game that the servers were turned off and don't work anymore. So there's your answer. Snorlax cheered. He says, any update on your parents in Connecticut? I saw on the news COVID rate is up. 5% for the entire state. 35 people just passed away, I think, two days ago alone. Are their Christmas plans affected? I speak with my parents every single week, all right? And the thing is, they already <laughs> had a lifestyle where they don't go out that much anyway. My Both of my parents have physical ailments that make it not so easy for them to get around anyway, all right? Just to be honest, my mom's knees are completely shot, uh, and my dad has a bad back. So most of the time they're spent is at home with their, their cats. Like, that's their family now is they have a bunch of cats that they raise. Um, my dad has to go into work every once in a while. But most of the time he's able to remotely work from home. All right? And when he goes to work, he is, like, super careful with everything. You know, mask, sanitization, everything. Okay? Um, essentially, my parents live at home for the most part and only go out when they absolutely have to. Every single week, I check with them. My mom actually just got a flu vaccine for the year. And she got if you, she got the flu from it, but it only lasted a few days because it was just a minor version of the flu from the vaccine. Um, but luckily, they have not had anything COVID-related happen to them. They're really nervous, just like me. If they get it, they could die. They're very high risk. They would be, they would be dead on. They would be the category that if they got it, they're very high chance they're going to die. But luckily, they've been okay. I'm going to check with them. Actually, it's usually every Wednesday that I check in with them. Um, <clears throat> so, we'll see. Hopefully, everything remains the same and they're fine. I don't want them to obviously be affected by this. And it is one of my biggest fears. Okay. Ladies, man, cheers. That's my fault. I apologize. I didn't know that. It's cool, dude. It's totally cool. It could be confusing. It definitely can be confusing because no one even knew they were doing a Demon Souls remake until much earlier this year when it was announced in the summer out of nowhere and then it ended up being a launch title, right? So no worries there, but uh, I hope I clarified for you, okay? <clears throat> okay, shout outs. Today's Monday. That means it's a new week, my friends. And with a new week comes new leaderboards, all right? Sadly, those leaderboards I need to reload because they did not refresh on my laptop. And my laptop takes about 77 minutes to reload a fucking chat. So please bear with me here while I try to reload and read these leaderboards that are just not working right now. <clears throat> Hold on. <laughs> fucking thing. Come on, leaderboard. I know you want to show up. God damn it. I'll try one more time. If not, I'll have to completely reload and pop out the chat from the dashboard again. Because it is not working here. Ugh. Come on, leaderboard. You know you want to load? It's not loading. Fuck. All right. Hold on a second. Son of a bitch. Fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Let me reload. I got to reload my whole dashboard now. And then pop out the chat again from the dashboard. And that should fix the leaderboard. I should be able to see it from there. But of course, I actually have to get the dashboard to load, which could be another huge undertaking in its entirety. I know you guys are like, what? You're serious? Yeah, my laptop is that much of a piece of crap at this point. Like I said, the two big things in early 2021 that I need to improve first is new chair and new laptop. These are the things that are absolutely the most demanding and important right now. Um... You know, everything else can wait, essentially. By the way, it won't even... I'm serious. I can't even get the fucking load here. Come on, dude. 
Load the fucking... I can't even see the leaderboard. You gotta be joking me. It won't load on my laptop. And the thing is, I just... I just restarted my laptop clean the other day. So it's not even like, oh, this is because Phil's had his laptop on endlessly for the past three months. I just refreshed this laptop. And the fucking thing will not show me the leaderboard. In truth, this isn't that big of a deal. Simply because the leaderboard is renew renewed today. So there's not going to be that many people to shout out. But I am frustrated that I can't do it. it look, it keeps wanting to do it. And then it, it, and then it fails. Let me click on pop out. Yeah, it's not working. I think what it, it... Oh, it just worked! Wow, okay. I popped it out and it worked. All right, well, that's fortuitous. All right, shout out to the top cheers of the week, which are essentially the top cheers of today. Carlton Jr., Snatch Commander, and Dark Side Elon are tied for 8th place. So Golden Colts and Knows Nobody are tied for 6th. 50 Bit Quan and Sambuca are tied for 4th. Sting and Burroughs is in 3rd. Ladies Man's in 2nd. And Rob on Wheels is in 1st place so far. Also... Uh, wow, excuse me, it's disgusting. There have been zero gifted subs, so there's no one to shout out for that right now. Um, Chimera Dog just cheers, says, you let the Game Awards things go. Uh, oh, I will, trust me, I have no reason to talk about it anymore, so we're done. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a break. I gotta use the restroom when we come back. It's Yakuza 7 continuing on in the dungeon that I was in. We need to backtrack a little bit, because I probably missed some items rushing to the save point last time around when I was running out of time, but we'll have some fun today with Fun Yakuza 7. I'll see you in a bit. Thanks for listening. Be back in a moment.